Welcome back to uh, in continuation with growth and development of industry and in this we are going to do the development strategies that we adopted in industry since independence. So we know that we have this mixed economy in which the coexistence of private and public. In this they talked about expansion of the public sector because welfare motive was the aim. Then there was, we d they did allow private sector to come up, but with strict regulation. So there was this legislative base given in the sense that we had some acts. In 1951, we had the Industrial Development Regulation Act. Then in 1969, we had the Monopolies Restrictive Trade Practices. And in 1955, we had this Carway Committee, which came up with the how important development of small scale industries are. So, and then we had this emphasis on capital goods industries. We also talked about the uh, policy of import substitution. Then regional equality should be brought out in industries. Then the, we, we adopted a restrictive policy towards foreign capital. And we did, again, this was uh, on the basis of a legislative act, and that was Foreign Exchange Regulation Act of 1973. So I wanted to just go through the points while I just, whatever I've said, I'm going to repeat it very slow for you to understand while you see or when you read next or you, okay. So development strategies are in uh, industry since independence. So government understood that industrialization can make an important contribution to the development process. That is why it took a number of measures. So one was that uh, expansion of the public sector. So public sector consisted of all production units owned and managed by the government. At the time of independence, there were hardly anything excepting railways uh, that was spectacular in public sector. So slowly they thought of expanding the public sector. The basic fact, the motivating force in the private sector is profit motoring, profit making. That's what uh, we know uh, instead of social welfare. So the government uh, took this up to fulfill some plan targets you can't force some it's very difficult to force a private sector to you know follow uh, some targets so this was it and another thing was that for key it was establishing basic and key industries large scale investment was needed where the, and not only that the gestation period was very long which the private sector undertakings could not take up initially so and another thing is that the private sector would not be interested in the development of industrially backward areas and uh, all this because of all this it was important that the industrialization as such be taken by the public sector by expanding the public sector the private sector was allowed to come in but with strict regulation it was felt that the government should intervene in the market forces so that it secures adequate livelihood for the poor and brings down the disparity among classes and economic activities of the private sector were controlled through various instruments like licensing and uh, basically licensing under and we did have some acts legislative uh, support 
like under the industrial development and regulation act 1951 new industry could not be established without obtaining necessary license and getting itself registered that was the important point and under monopolies and restrictive trade practices practices act that is mrtp act of 1969 restrictions were imposed on the growth and development of industries so any undertaking which had asset of rupees 100 crores or more were covered under this act so they didn't want anybody to become state monopolies uh, private monopoly sorry they didn't want any private monopolies then in 1955 we had this carve committee which came up uh, which was for the development of small scale industries because they recognized that if they want to bring about the growth of the rural sector then it become very important to see that uh, small scale sector uh, or the small scale industries the cottage industries are supported by the government so initially uh, the limit was rupees 5 lakhs in 1951 over the years it has been increased to 5 crores so we'll do small scale industries in the uh, later on but right now I, I we go to the next one let's just take the emphasis on capital goods industry so that time they wanted to develop capital good industries like iron and steel industries producing machinery and equipment why because of the fact that such industries add to productive capacity of the economy and that leads to faster development in future so and it they wanted that india uh should stop being an exporter of uh, primary products and importer of machinery so she should build her own machine Uh, making capacity and lay the foundation for a strong and a self-reliant economy then we had this policy of import substitution what is import substitution it means replacing the imported goods by producing those goods at home or domestically so for example if you want to do if instead of importing vehicles from a foreign country industries were encouraged to produce them in india itself and then the important thing was the government protected the domestic industries from foreign competition and this was also aimed at saving of foreign exchange on one hand and achieving the objective of self reliance on the other and how did they protect well in the form of tariffs and quotas what are tariffs they are tax on imported goods which make them costlier and what are quotas they specify the maximum amount maximum quantity of imported goods and they use these two to discourage and restrict imports and this is how they protected the domestic production uh, from foreign competition then another point was that as you see policy of regional equality they wanted to bring about or reduce regional disparities so if anybody said for one was that if anybody wanted to establish an industry in any backward region they could easily get the license and then if one decided to open an industry in a backward area then government also provided them with provided them with capital subsidies and also fiscal incentives were given to them so this way they were um, substantial investments which were made in relatively backward areas like in orissa bihar madhya pradesh 
uh, like for example, three steel plants were set up in public sector at Bhilai. Uh, that is Madhya Pradesh, Rurkela, that is Orissa, and Durgapur, that is West Bengal. And then you had this uh, Foreign Exchange Regulation Act of 1973, where they wanted to restrict, they, wa they followed a restrictive, restricted policy towards foreign capital. And this went up right up till the new economic policy of 1991, where the government of India adopted a very restricted policy towards foreign capital. And why did they do it? Basically, direct foreign investment in India was permitted on a highly selected basis. No foreign investor could hold more than 40% shares in equity of a company. And secondly, we find that loans from foreign sources were encouraged, these were preferred to investment by foreign capitalists. So loans they allowed, but they didn't want investment by foreign capitalists. And to technical collaborations were given preference over financial corporation, collaborations. And, and the important thing was that if you went in for such a collaboration, that is technical collaboration, that could be entered in for a fixed period of time. So these are some of the development strategies that were undertaken or in industry since independence.